Hey guys, this is Gabe from Disciples here, and today we have another Type Tuesday that will not be released on a Tuesday because it's Tuesday today, so it means it only comes out tomorrow. <laughs> and who do we have here? Uh, Henry, hello. Marcus and Sam. Ooh, everyone's super excited. Not like it's nine thirty and everyone's <laughs> dying. No one has, a, no one actually is like excited to do it, but you have to go through it because you gotta get an episode out this week. So, <laughs> what do we have to talk about? Uh, talk about your Rio trip. Yeah, we didn't get a rundown. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a shame that like we didn't get that through last week. Because I'll be honest, Rio, not not for the tournament, it was one of the most fun YCS atmospheres I've ever seen. Yeah, I was jealous from just seeing everything, what everyone was posting to, it sounded like everyone had a good time. Yeah, so, so basically, for people that don't know, uh, the YCS in Rio is basically by the beach, and it's hosted in a hotel. So everyone just stays in the same hotel, which is beachside. So what kind of happened is that like before, before the rounds, people went to the beach, lunch break was in the beach, uh, the after event was also on the beach. <laughs> it was just like a very, very good like party vibe. Everyone that came from abroad loved Brazil. Brazil is a very fun country for foreigners. And yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure you have seen some of the videos and pictures around. I have some on my Twitter. But like everyone had a blast. I, I, all the foreigners that came, oh my god, they they had a good time. <laughs> like, um, I, and I, I guess like the other cool thing is that it was the first big event in in Brazil in forever because our last YCS before Rio was basically twenty eighteen. That's like ages wow. ago. Yeah. Okay, so. You had a, a YCS in twenty eighteen, yeah. A YCS in twenty twenty two, and then a cancelled YCS. Yeah, in so twenty twenty exactly. <laughs> because uh, the other one was much bigger. Literally cancelled on the Saturday. The the, the cancelled YCS for people that don't know actually was going to happen at the exact same venue that this one was. It was the same thing, uh, but now nah, it was super super fun. Um, huge shoutouts to all the foreigners that came. A lot of people sometimes are afraid of coming to Brazil. Um, there's a there's a stigma that it's not safe that it's not a good place but in general I think everyone that came uh, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Pax vlog on the YCS uh, like the place looks stunning and it was sick I hope they do more YCSs in places like this that you can like do a proper vacation and go to the beach go out instead of just doing like Milan because yeah, like one, <laughs> one of the favorite European YCSs that a lot of us went to was Rimini because it was literally like yeah it's so center. safe. 10 minutes from the beach, it was great, but obviously, like, YCS are too big for it now. Yeah. But, I'm definitely yeah. down for Brazil. You know, if we all, all make the trip next year or whenever the next event is, it looks so fun. Yeah, I, I'm fully dragging everyone with me next year. Like, you, you guys have a blast. Uh, that's the kind of trip, like, I, I think a bunch of the Americans and the, the, the when they stayed from, like, Wednesday to Wednesday. So it's kind of like we're doing in Pasadena in, um, in a couple months. It's just, like, you go for the YCS, but you also get a proper trip out of it. Yeah. Also, I think it, if you're paying yeah. that much, sorry, if you're paying that much for flights and accommodation, you want to make the most out of the trip. You don't want to go business, YCS, go back. You know, yeah. you want to... Yeah. I think then it just depends so much on the event and your results. And like, you know, like not everyone can do well. So it's just like if your um, experience is dependent on your results, it's just a bit weird. Whereas like sometimes, you know, if you're just having a really good week, um, and just hanging around with your friends, like you know, some some of those events are like the my my favorite events. Yeah, uh, I prefer the events where there's actually stuff to do. Like I remember when I did, I scrubbed Milan, and the only <laughs> thing of any note around was a McDonald's. There was literally nothing else in yeah. the nearby vicinity. But like you scrub out, ah, uh, let me go up to my room, get changed, spend the rest of the trip on the beach. That seems yeah. pretty good. Yeah. The, the other thing is like, I don't know, I felt really not pressured as YCS uh, because I was having a great time. I was honestly like, since the Wednesday that I arrived, I was just having a blast. I was seeing all my friends that I haven't seen in forever. I was having fun. Uh, if I didn't do well, I still had a fun trip. But when you go to a YCS that the only thing you're doing is playing, your whole enjoyment of the weekend becomes the result. So if you, you, you put yeah. more pressure on yourself, and if you go badly, sometimes even for things that like are out of your control, because it's how Yu-Gi-Oh operates, right? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. just kind of, kind of like just waste your your time and your energy and your holiday days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. 
So yeah, uh, it's kind of brief and real. I don't want to over accent. I mean, we have some funny stories. Most of them are not allowed to be told on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but ch- check out the Twitter for, for some pictures. And... How's the tournament in general? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess I, I, I can talk. I, I forgot. I played the tournament. I played Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, bro, you did well too. <laughs> yeah. Four wins away from madness. Nah, I, my tournament was good. Uh, I played the Danger tier. I was very confident in it. Um, I almost swapped to Rika last minute. Uh, after after Euros, I was like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I I think what Not saved me. Yeah, what, what <laughs> kind of saved me is that I couldn't get glamours, so I didn't get tempted. So I just fully commit to what I knew how to play. I probably I don't I think Rika would have been alright for that event. It might have been worse afterwards, but I think yeah, yeah not everyone's this that yeah. changed like. And, and, I, and I think Rika's kind of weird in Brazil because for some reason in Brazil hand trap decks are super popular. Like there's a lot of hand trap sprite and there's a lot of math mac, and I think those are decks that Rika struggles more against compared to just like playing Splite and tier. There's also more weird trap decks. To be fair, all the math, a lot of the math make lists I saw just were playing no mystic mine outs. I was just super confused. Like, I yeah, think the guy that came second just true. didn't. I was like, just, yeah. just played yeah. no mine outs. I think it's so literally... strange because the engine has a searchable mine out, and the format has mine. And you elect not to no. play a searchable mine out. Uh, I think all of them are fine versus those decks. <laughs> to be fair, the, the way that mystic mine burn went is because he played math mac on 32, 8, 4, and finals. Oh, is did it? any so of them play induction? Blast, man. Yeah, did my any man, of them play I don't know if any of them played. Uh, maybe one did, but like I'm saying, like literally, he played like the <laughs> Beth Mac Top Cut. I mean, it was all people that he sold circulars to the week before. True, that is the the <laughs> circular stash. So, uh, okay, am I to blame for Mystic Mind winning the Vice? Yes, is that the the circle we're going for? Moving on. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, I, I played Danger Tier. It was one of the most fun tournaments I played because I really liked the deck and I think that I was playing it very well. And it's a hard deck. Like, it, it challenges you constantly, especially going second. Going first, you gotta be sure to play around board breakers. But also, like, you can't fully ink into hand traps. So, it was very, very fun. I went 7 2 in Swiss. I, I, op- I started like 5 0. I played like 4 or 5 sprites and I chewed all of them. It's insane. And then yeah, I lost you. I lost your flounder, as you do. That's fair enough. Uh, did he? Uh, it wasn't the um, the normal summon Robina incident. It was more like he. I, I went. I went first. I comboed and I made like the board into flounder and I went Mystic Mine. And then I was like, oh, yeah, because <laughs> I didn't have an out because I banished it off pot. And I think oh, game, uh, yeah. And I think game. Oh yeah, and then game three, like he literally made full flounder combo, and he set four cards. Uh, what? So he had like the hoppies. So no, so, so I thought like I, I, I can't win, right? So I tried to play. Yeah. And I go, I, I, I fact of a tear in grave. He changed deep back here. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then I go a danger in hand, and he goes harpies, and I'm like, what the fuck? is happening how are these two things happening at the same time like it doesn't make a difference but it's just like extra offensive did he need to set both of those cards no <laughs> of course he did it <laughs> what does deep oh, air for it's like you go pro ai man just set card flip card flip card <laughs> flounder player but yeah so i i was five five all lots of flounder then I won two more, and I played Daryl in the last round. We were playing like the same list, basically. So I lost, because he won the Daryl. Uh, <laughs> I played then Dinomorphia on top. Okay, there's a fun story here. <laughs> basically, we finished day one, right? It's nine rounds of day one. Uh, we actually finished kind of early for nine rounds. I think we finished like about seven. It wasn't too bad. So uh, I went to, went, to ba- uh, went to the room, took a shower, and everyone just kind of went... Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, so everyone just kind of went to this beach bar, just like right in front of the venue. When I mean everyone, it's like genuinely like a fifth of the venue was there. It was a 500 person YCS, there were like a hundred people there. That sounds sick. I don't know if you, I sent some of the videos in the group chat, uh, but basically like, they started like getting the foreigners and they started like giving shots to the foreigners. Like everyone just, there, there are some very funny videos from the, the, the thing, but basically everyone just drank a lot. 
And the it issue was like is that two thirds of Top Cut, right? Sorry, basically, two thirds of Top Cut was there. <laughs> and uh, we kept joking that we thought Paulo would win the YCS because Paulo was the only person in Top Cut I didn't find there. Because <laughs> I, I legit saw everyone except Paulo. Uh, but like, yeah, so basically, we all went out. Uh, we had a wonderful time. But the issue is that Top Cut started at 9, and I woke up like at 8 20, like, shit, I gotta play Top Cut. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> And then, my top 32 matchup, I knew because it was a friend of mine, I was playing Dino Morphe. Uh, the matchup is... is matchup? It's good. Know. It's actually meant to be good because it's Kill Drain, and now you guys are activating Grave. And Super Poly is super, super good against that. Ooh, yeah. Because like they end up like two fusions, because just Super Poly them both just appear there. The yeah, issue... I like darks, I like fusions, and you can make Guru. Like, yeah. there's never a point where like, Super Poly is dead, right? <laughs> like, it's always like... I remember because I opened Super Poly game one, and I said it before combo. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm going to combo, but that, this, yeah. this case that first. Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up beating that on Morphia eventually, and then I lost to Mathmac top, top 16. I just bricked game three. I full-on bricked. Oh, and this man opened the most insane hand ever, because I appointed him. His hand was Reboot, Circular, Gamma, it was Ash or Nib, it was another hand trap, uh, the Diameter, and DD Crow. And he didn't reboot me, he didn't reboot the appointer, which I thought was bizarre, because if he reboots the appointer, he just wins the game, right? He doesn't. So I, Did you I, have I'm, any other macro, though? Or... I mean, I had another, but like, it's Reboot in it, like... like uh, <laughs> He was what playing I, around judgment in, I, in I, I think I, I think I think, re <laughs> I think he got over overly excited by the fact I passed. Honestly, yeah. Fair uh, but like, yeah, I took this. I took the circular, and then I drew a nasty. I went nasty, got gamma, and then I went a pointer again. Then I got people to. Yeah. But yeah, uh, in general, I really like the deck. I think it's a shame that it didn't beat Mathmac because I think it probably should deck that could have gone deep in top cut. But it is what it is. I'm happy with the top. We'll take it. Top's the top. Yeah, and I top top well. pretty sick too. Like top the first YCS of the you know format. Yeah. Get the get the first first one to get the mat. Yeah. Oh yeah, I still have the mat. I have to sell it. Oh, if anyone wants a mat, there's like only two in the UK right now, and I'm pretty sure Darren sold his. So there's only one, which is mine. <laughs> Just DM me. You can get that one. Um, I'm gonna be in a European YCS soon, so. Uh... Exactly. Jump in the chance, please. Uh, let me pay rent. Yeah. <laughs> and then what? Last weekend we had Oceanics. Yeah, so we had Oceanics on the last weekend, which was a bit of a different format because the Runic set was legal. Uh, Tactical Masters, I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know much about the Runic cards until I actually didn't read any of them prior to that event. I, I, I didn't don't know what it, but they, they were pretty, when I was reading them, they were like pretty good, like as like generic cards, not yeah. bad. Yeah, Runic really cards are good. Sorry. If they if they didn't block your battle phase, I think they'd be like one of the most insane archetypes ever. I mean, of course, the the, the, the whole drawback is is block the battle phase, right? Yeah, 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 of course. But it's such a big drawback. Yeah, I, I have really I, because I was moving this week and I really didn't catch up much of those channels. I saw I saw the finals at Tier Mayor and I saw Runic had some representation. I have uh, the Runic list. I can actually probably put it on screen if I'm somewhat competent. You guys can open it. It's free tops, right? Uh, yeah, so three top. This is Poe's list. It's like this plus a running toady. Uh, can you guys open the link on this card? I'll just put it on the OBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it looks great. I think the, the list looks decent. The runic cards either say put a level two on board or like do something else, which kind of like provides value for like loads of different scenarios. Yeah, uh, it's got it, the level two's the main synergy that works between them, but yeah. Yeah, what does the level two fusion guy actually do? Is that the one that searches the field spell? It, um, it searches the field spell from deck. Oh, okay. And, That's um, good. It's also a lightning storm out. Yeah. But... The the best effect is that if a if a different card you control would be destroyed, you can banish it from field instead. Oh, okay. So if, yeah. If like you, your opponent would play like lightning storm or harpy, you can chain the quick play spell, summon this guy, and then banish him like Bailings. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool. actually really cool. Yeah, so the, the list is on screen right now. That's more, like, by the way, more editing than most type choosing episodes. So you're lucky I'm the one recording it this weekend. 
Um, <laughs> so as you guys can see, it's basically like uh, this was Poe's Poe Jenkins. He Poe's the one that won. He didn't. Did he win the other twice? Has with striker. He got second with striker. I think he, he won, won, right? He won. Yeah, he, he won. won. Off, I missed it. Mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poe won. Yeah. But I think I think I heard like him and most of his like team or testing bug mates were all playing basically this list. And I think yeah. I, I don't know if all 16? of them did. The... Sorry. Two of them made top sixteen. Yeah. So it's obviously cool. Um, it's a runic deck that isn't playing mine that I don't think anything's realistically going to be hit on any upcoming list. So, pretty cool. Yeah. Like Some it. of the cool things about this list, like the side deck, like Alpha in, in the Splite is different. He's also uh, playing Gamma already. Burst. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no Ga way Gamma, gamma Burst in a runic version just feels weird. <laughs> but there's a battle phase! <laughs> Wait, why is um, Alpha better than Pancratops? Like, I don't. I don't know. I think Pancratops is pretty. Oh, uh, you can summon it twice, right? So it's like yeah. you special it, you attack, <laughs> then you use it. I don't know. I, I guess for you, it'd be pointed if you're playing with runic cards and you haven't got a battle phase. Alpha might have a little bit more value because you can well, use. Fair enough. Yeah, that makes you sense. Can reuse it, possibly. I don't fully know. Uh, I'll be honest. I've yeah. seen Alpha being sided around. It's curious to have Alpha no pank though. That's actually a good catch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, but yeah. like, yeah, sorry, I, I was gonna say, just going to say, I think games with Runic last a long time, so like using the Alpha like multiple times, maybe you're getting value out of that. That's actually true. That's uh, because the because you, you can't kill them, right? So you kind of got out grind them. You gotta put them. A, yeah. You, you, you gotta grind them into a state they can't play the game and they're forced to scoop. Yeah. So yeah. This looks pretty cool. Um, I also let me see if I can get it real quick. Uh, it's Bowden's list. He got second. Oh yeah, where... I thought he played like pretty cool text. Like he tried to like meta game the. Oh. Yeah, he tried to meta game the event by like expecting people just to hate on tears, and he could just find ways to like. Um, I assume that's how he built his deck. He didn't want to lose to any of like the floodgates. So he was trying to just play it, play his deck to not lose to like Eve, uh, sorry, Mystic Mine rivalry. Uh, Troll, cherries. Yeah. What did he play? He he, he played the um, he played like branded in high spirits. Oh that oh that card that, that yeah. area. Yeah, so he uh, played what? So I I played against someone on DB that was playing it while I was on a stream with Hash, and we were very confused like weeks ago when we saw it, but it seems like it works. The card is actually pretty cool. Right? Like, I think, like, the idea is, so his deck list was, like, EV to, like, make sure you beat all the spell decks. And then the Brandon and the High Spirits kind of, like, makes you beat Droll if you can, like, summon a Catalyst in Draw Phase. And you can also beat Cherries yeah. if you can summon a Catalyst in Draw Phase. Uh, which, I don't know, are, it's pretty decent when you're trying to, like, counter the tier deck. Because the tier deck is very powerful and you think the first card you want to put in is Droll. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. And, like, it's... It's no way to be dark full of right because you can just set it and pass if you have yeah. like if you waste the flames. And... To be fair, I think you kind of just be dark cooler by not doing anything. I think your deck already beats it. But the the yeah, very true, cool thing true. about high yeah, spirits is that like into any hand trap deck, the card is like absurd because it's kind of like instant fusion. Uh, you basically are like using it. You're summoning the guy and you're drawing one. Uh, you waste a tier name, but it doesn't really matter at the end. Uh, you gotta commit the Death Frog, and the other thing that I don't love about it is that you... I don't, I don't think Bolden play Desires. I don't think you can play Desires with High Spirits. No, no, that's what he you just decided. Yeah. I think he just took the, like, um, ceiling of the deck lower, yeah. like, the power, powerness of the deck yeah. lower, just to be able to beat the outs, and, yeah, yeah. just to be able to beat all the cards he loses to, which I think yeah. makes sense. It's more important, definitely, for sure. Yeah. Oh, another cool thing uh, from Oceanix. Uh, the winning list is a Punk tier deck, that yeah, play uh yeah he did hey. yeah it's Ooh, punks and no it's he plays hand traps and punks right uh let me find the list oh i don't know i think he plays lots of hand traps yeah he, I, I mean he doesn't play a lot of hand traps he played like crow like and he played like eight and then he played it was like a mid-range tier list i thought i thought it was like eight hand traps and like dynamiscus dude oh it's it, yeah there's no punks there's no punks i am tripping never mind yeah it was like it was like he went oh. for like a mid-range tier list it's kind of like pure yeah, tier. So, so and you, was he playing like uh, no dangers, no branded no stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 
putting the list Just of this card. Mid range stairs, I'll, I'll call it. I'll send the link on WhatsApp because if I open this card, it fucks up the recording. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. It's in the Cypress Media. Uh, yeah, it's like very, very mid range actually. Because uh, I, I was thinking of another list. There's a list that was that the one that I was thinking about, it's not the Inno's list, is the one that played punk cards and high rate drop as the mine out. Oh, will be a trap card that draws cards by popping monsters you control. Yeah, yeah. So high rate draw is kind of cool because it, um, it, it, it you can use it in the graveyard to banish it to set itself by setting by destroying a monster you control. So it's basically another mine out, and when it, it has a utility because you can pop a tier and then the tier triggers, and it's a quick effect as because it's a trap, right? Cool. Like, there's like good and bad things I like about this list. Like I don't think Crow is a good card. I, I I don't know. It just seems like a very fair trade whenever you use it. But I can understand the uh, Nibiru. I think he probably just was catching people with Nibiru, and I can imagine he was like catching people with Dynamiscus too. Like if they tried to like you know go mine pass. Yeah. I'm sure he stole wins from those cards. But I think the Crow is probably. This feels a bit questionable. Um, I think Ash is very yeah. questionable as well. Yeah, I don't yeah, love it. I mean, I understand Crow like slightly more. Um, I think it's a bit more, more versatile, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I think Ash is like mid into everything. Like, I don't think Ash is great yeah. I don't think it's great into tier. His trade's poorly. Yeah, yeah, not the biggest one. Uh, the, the one kind of cool thing, I guess, is that like Nib, for example, super punishes the Eradicator line. So the Eradicator yeah, yeah, yeah. line, like you, you make everything, you just get nipped at the end, it doesn't work. One of the reasons that I chose to play Dino Mist because of Eradicator for Rio is that it just beats Nib a lot better. Because if you get if you get nipped on the Eradicator line, you actually just lose. But if you get nipped yeah. on, the, on the line that just Griffin sets Dino Miscus, you have Dino Miscus. So we, when no, they sell so tier in hand is exactly yeah 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 because like if you have like field spell then Omiscus tier in hand, uh, they do something you then Omiscus it you tier effect you make it Carlos you pop with the field spell you make Perlino you, you make uh, you make yeah. Jugestapelia, so the then Omiscus is kind of like three interrupts, and it's still a mine out, but Eradicator is of course a lot more powerful if people are playing decks like the like Joshua's deck, although I don't think that was very popular in Oceanix, like the full full board breaker sprite. Yeah, I think people were just really big on on, on hand traps, right? People love that deck. I mean, it's it's hard to play board breakers though once everyone's kind of prepared for board breakers. Like once tier migrates into eradicator kind of lines, it's hard to play those sorts of that. Because yeah. then you insta lose hand traps. At least you always have a fighting chance, even if they're bad. It made it made so much sense when people just weren't respecting the board breakers. But I think now everyone's like, wait, these cards are like board breakers yeah. are obviously very powerful, but. They can obviously be counted a lot more easier um, than hand traps. Yeah, um, I think I it's like always for Niagara. Yeah, Wait, I can just imagine for Niagara the like I think there will in the top tier list. I think there will be a dip in popularity for board breakers and cards like Nibiru might see action. Yeah, because there's a, there's an argument that like if you can play a high impact hand trap like Nib and Nib stops enough turns, maybe you just play Nib and you just instead of a board breaker. For example, Super Poly. I love Super Poly. I think it's very good in tier. But it doesn't really help you beat the mirror. And it's also not great into Mathematics, for example. And some of those runic lists it doesn't really do great. Uh, might be a, a trend you see people switching. I already see less people on tier on Dark Ruler and more people on Imper. That's something that we did, and I think that I've seen a couple lists. Dark Ruler is like kind of losing popularity. Yeah, it's like I don't think you're guaranteed to win games going first. So with Dark Ruler, you kind of just get no value from it. So maybe like the combined value of Imperm going first and second is probably better than. Yeah. Well, it just be better. I also think Imperm is just a lot better in the mirror. Like you can beat weak mirror hands by drawing Imperm, or at least like because the mirror can kind of break the board if you don't get Dwellered. Like as long as you don't get Dwellered, you can actually just break through whatever because you can make Mud Dragon, and Mud Dragon deals with like every single interaction in the mirror. Mud Dragon uh, is incredible. It yeah, is for like uh, rookie killer. In the mirror, just like so, my dragon effect. Like, oh, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I played one of the most insane games that I like ever. I played against Yasin on round eight in Rio, and he was playing tier, but he wasn't main in dweller, so he ended on redoer. So he ended on like redoer, Hawk. I had this no engrave and like the two tier traps. Yeah, and then I was like, instant fusion, someone mud <laughs> Oh, is it? That's and like, all the, all the interventions are that. 
<laughs> you yeah. can't actually do a single one of them. That's so sick. I'm sure he just he just took it. He, just, he was just taking it. <laughs> My friend was like, oh, because like if just someone could call us there, just get negated yeah. by the. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Suliak. I mean, that's yeah, like. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, go on. What are you saying? Sorry. So, so like I made zero boros. Mm-hmm. And I just like mm-hmm. with the mod dragon on the field, and I just yeah. I, I made dark to force something yeah. that forced him to just no, and then I make zero boros, and I made Dugaris, and Dugaris is zero boros, and just beat over something. <laughs> but I think that's what makes the deck so rewarding because like yeah, you only really you only really know that line from either you know playing the deck loads or someone's done it to you. Um, yeah, no, no, that's what I think makes the tier mirror so fun is. Generally, like your opponent can set up their board and then you can play through their board because their interactions don't actually stop you, they just, they See, just interact. I, I, I would think that, but it feels like you just got welder like the same one that's like borderline yeah, competent. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. sure. So you didn't decide to end on dweller, you just thought to I don't think he main dweller, I think you're signing it. <sighs> Massive mistake, bro. Bro, I didn't play redoer, I played welder. Like, yeah. <laughs> Nah, insane. Nah, Dweller is like nuts. I played both, bro. Come on. Nah. <laughs> I, play, I played 18 stuff. Like, he was very good for me. That's fair enough. I think Redo is just a good vibes card. <laughs> Redo is every crazy, time, like, well, is too good. Every time yeah. I made Retour, it got ogred. Like, every single time. Because <laughs> there's nothing else to ogre. And then I was making Redo and testing, he just gets ogred. I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. Nothing else gets so good. There's <laughs> nothing else to Yeah, yeah it's, right. it's amazing. It's amazing. Dragon's to Pelia, I mean, field spell. And there's like only two other, like, instances, right? I mean, if, if you ogre the field spell, be my friend, right? Like, at that point, like, <laughs> you, you, you just, you just handled yourself. Yeah, it's hard enough. <laughs> but nah, yeah. I think that's cool about Tear, and I think Tear is going to grow a lot. Uh, even uh, with the new releases, right? Because. OCG had the Shizu tier, and I think the Shizu tier can be a lot like different 100%. than the TCG. Because there's no Max C, bro. Like, you're not playing to beat yeah. Max C. So, like, that changes the whole dynamic. Decks like this tier variants that we're seeing here weren't played in the OCG. First, because I think the OCG deck goes a bit differently, and second, because Max C kind of makes them unviable. But here, you've got to just play like this crack cocaine tier deck. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to be so curious yeah. to see what it looks like. Because I can imagine now, like, the people. The, the people that are making the tier list now are just trying to make the deck to make sure they don't lose versus the lose conditions. Like, Odin would must have, like, I feel like Bolden's list, he was just playing games to make sure he doesn't lose the mind and rivalry. I can just imagine, like, since tier yeah. is so powerful, you can kind of just sacrifice yeah. power just to make sure mm-hmm. you beat all the, yeah. all the edge cases. I yeah. imagine yeah, it's good theory, about. right? Like, if, if you think you have the best engine in the room, you just want to play every game, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like, if, if you're playing tier, like I need to resolve one effect. Yeah, yeah. Right, right like, like the, fir- <laughs> I, I, the first effect I resolve, I feel my deck is just better than everyone else's. Uh, the games that I, the games you lose with tier are usually the games you get floodgated. Are not yeah, the games. You can't misplay with, can't misplay with tier. Obviously, yeah. you're broken with tier. You can't misplay. Uh, no, no, that is very hard. Yeah. In the other games I was losing was mid hands and my kit Kalos got input. And there's a lot of like moving parts. It's kind of like Dragon Link in the sense that it's not like you look at your hand and you know what you do. Yeah, you look there's at your hand. More yeah. moving parts. That's the thing with Tate. Like you kind of have to play at every single because yeah. uh, you're just playing cards. And if you mill, if you mill one tier, two tiers, three tiers, it kind of just changes the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's like, or what do you want to like play around? We want to play around Dark Pool. You want to play around Mystic Mind. Like, what is the? Because there's different end parts you can end on. There's different ways you can build your hand. deck. There are even times when you're going second and you've got to have this now and you think, well, sometimes I didn't even want to activate the have this. So there are so many things you've got to remember. Yeah. 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 Hardly ever happens. Hardly ever happens. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yep, it's happening to the stake in my hand. I mean, it, it happens in some hands, to be fair. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's some indicators when playing too. Because, like, obviously, if you see a Veiler, I think that makes you think there's like a higher chance that they probably might main the Biru. And you're kind of like, you kind of have to take that. I don't know, I, if I was playing, I can't, I'll yeah. take that into consideration. Yeah, Th- this was this was literally my, my round one. I remember, I sat down, won the Dairo. I oh, went Instant Fusion, because I'm very good at the game. Uh, instant Fusion, someone killed Kalos, I got Veilered. And I'm like, okay, you got Veilered. So this is not tier, probably. It's probably Sprite <laughs> or Mathmac. Uh, and then like, how do I play on Nib? So instead of going for the Griffin line, I ended on like Elf, Curious, and Snowing Grave, and some other thing. 
And then he nibbed me. And then when he nibbed me, he like, I just made a board again because he nibbed over the curious. Yeah. But that's what's so rewarding about the deck. Like, yeah. Insane, like, insanely rewarding. Like, how you kind of only get out that from either experience or, you know, talking to people. Yeah. It, it, it was one of the decks that I felt, like, most in control in a while because I'm very pissed that Eros was a week before because I was working on this deck for, like, a month and Eros yeah. kind of, like, spoiled the surprise. Yeah. Uh, Eros, like, was the event to like get the like real edge right? Yeah, yeah I, I, there still was. People in Brazil still were like weren't yeah. fully sure what was happening. It was very like short. You need to understand like the event happens in Europe Saturday and Sunday. You, you need to ride for real on Friday. Like there's not enough time to learn the deck. I think it was Harman that said to like some of the Konami guys that like they, he could give his list to them right now and they wouldn't be able to play the deck, which is kind of true. You yeah, can't yeah. just pick it up and learn it on the fly. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Right, yeah. what's next on the agenda? You think it'll win uh, Oshi, um, Niagara? You think they will win Niagara? I'll say you can talk about Niagara predictions. True. It's hard. I, I've been kind of out of the loop because I, I haven't fully followed Oceanics and how Runic went. I do think there's a lot of good players on tier. I think it's kind of like the... It's kind of like Thunder Danger in that format, you know? A bunch of players are like, this deck is super powerful. Uh, it can just steamroll really through. Like, yeah, rewarding for good technical play. Uh, so I mean, the, the obvious bet would be going for tier, but I also yeah, think I think, Sprite, the... I think Sprite might be a good choice now. That's what kind of put me off it for Euro because everyone's main in free dark run no more. Everyone's like deck devs, like everyone's side deck was like really Sprite hate. Everyone's main deck was Sprite hate. I think now people have put their foot off the gas with all the Sprite hate. You can actually just maybe if you built like choose the right tech cards. I've been practicing recently, but if I had you know the right tech cards in Sprite, I'm sure it could do well. Don't know what the, what they would do. Yeah. But... Yeah, you need to play something that like you you definitely can't play like vanilla sprite. It needs to be like a punk sprite that's like scythic in standby phase or like it, it needs to be playing sprite. something unfair. Like yeah. you, I don't think you can just play heavy hand trap and have no real edge aside from just having more hand traps in your opponent. So I I saw some people saying that Runic apparently has a good matchup into the tier deck. Uh, some of those runic variants are doing well. Again, I haven't really played, so this is more like me reading this card than me actually playing. Uh, but I think there's like a edge to be gotten there. The one annoying thing about runic is end of match procedures. The deck has an issue because you need to win in time somehow. Like you it don't have a have, battle phase. It it has a fusion that gains a thousand life in the end phase. Yeah. So so what what I'm saying is like. The deck is an issue for everyone involved. Because, I mean, it has a way to win in time, but like you can't enter the battle phase, so the games just take longer. And Niagara is 45 minutes. Niagara is 45 instead of 40, which is uh, probably good for the game. Yeah. But if I was playing Niagara, I would be concerned. I also think this farm is one of the hard ones to play without a time card, I won't lie to you. Borderline yeah, impossible. Yeah. 100%. Tear takes forever. Yeah. 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 It's not slow playing, it's just. No, it, it takes too long. Takes <laughs> yeah, it takes my, my favorite example is that feature match in Euros at uh, Faria and Vlad. It was a tier mirror. They both played super fast. I don't know if you guys watched it because we all were in the venue. But like, they, they, it's a tier mirror. They played insanely fast. And game two finished with like a minute left on the clock. Yeah, it's kind of just everyone takes like 10 minutes to make the board. And then the other person's taking 15 minutes to break it. Yeah, because I, I, Luca didn't make Dweller, so Vlad kind of broke the whole board, and, and they turned Luca broke over Vlad's board again. And yeah, it like, just takes it's forever. Like, it's not like quick combos like Sword Soul, Summon, Synchro. It's like Mill, <laughs> hey, Summon a Fusion, Mill more, Danger, Mill like. Uh, the, the, yeah. the deck is also slow mechanically. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like, it takes a while to do the things physically. Because you gotta like, get the things, you gotta put the thing on the bottom, you gotta put the thing on the bottom, you go danger effect. Each danger activation is like 15 seconds. Yeah, it does take Because well. danger, shuffle the hand, give the dice, roll the dice, pitch the card, summon the guy, draw one. It's like, it's not yeah. normal about Moi. <laughs> yeah. You're like, look at your hand, think of your play, mill like five cards and be like, oh, my play has changed. And that happens like two, three times. Yeah. Yeah, I okay. agree. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Oh, another fun thing about Rio. I played Ladybug, right? Over Laurel, because someone found out about Ladybug. And I won a game because it was specifically Ladybug instead of Laurel. Basically, my Daspia opponent did the, the Daspia thing, right? Uh, they scoop and they give the turn to me with like 
10 like a minute left on the clock and make a masquerade and go like you go a good luck you enjoy yourself so i i super polyed in the battle phase i took 600 and then he, i couldn't attack over the guy and then i go main phase two and he's like time on the round and then he's like oh yeah ggs right you have you have less life than i do and i'm like wait nope <laughs> nope <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> And then, like, it's the most convoluted way, and uh, the, the funniest thing is that he activated an effect, and I go half finish from hand, and then half finish just hits the ladybug. No, 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 I, I, could, I could have made curious. I, I didn't need that half finish to hit the ladybug. Oh, yeah, yeah. However, yeah, yeah. it made it a lot funnier. Because <laughs> the half finish just, like, hits the ladybug, I'm like, oh, plus a thousand? And then, like, he has to pick up ladybug, because he never read a card in his life. <laughs> oh yeah, that must, that must, that must feel good. That, that was good because everyone was playing Lauro uh, for Euros, and then yeah. someone found out that Ladybug exists, and I had to like go to the deeps of Brazil to find one of the three copies that exists in this country because the car is like from I don't know. It has one printing. It's like or yeah, I think it's IOC. Like literally the only printing is IOC. There's not even like a dark, like dark beginning reprint. It's insane. So yeah, uh, that uh, the ladybug funny story. I mean, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm going for a tier for Niagara. What you guys going for? Sprite. I don't know. Sprite. I At least you can think the tech that if you've been testing and you just test fight Sprite versus Combo Tier, I'm sure someone would have found a way. And without all the Dark Ruler no mores, I think people are cutting that card. I think it could be all right. I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I respect it. There's also Shifter. Uh, Paolo and Christian's list had Shifter. Uh, Sprites are commonly playing it, but there we were. And uh, that's the way it should just be tier, right? You have like 33% to just draw Shifter going second. And that probably wouldn't do the matchup. I think Philanders could win it. <laughs> <laughs> Normal Summit would be there. Eradicator. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, I, re I reckon Tier will win it, but I want Runic Sprite to win it. Because it's funny deck. Yeah, I think it'll be funny. I, I want to watch someone on stream with Runic. Like, they have the game won, but they can't enter the battle phase. <laughs> For like four turns. <laughs> They're like, bro, I have 12 cards. And the other guy's like, the other guy's like drop, pass. And he's like, shit, I can't go battle phase again. Pass. <laughs> Fuck, I can't go battle phase. <laughs> Do the Runics get battle phase stack? Is it not just... No, no, no. It's nah, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a one. Yeah. You basically, you gotta like, yeah. not play a turn. Should they get a battle phase? It is pretty bad yeah. because if you activate a card turn one, you're only entering battle phase on turn five. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. Like, is sprite monsters were low anyways? They were never really attacking over anything. <laughs> <laughs> how are you able to? How are you able to get like any board going second with sprite runic? I mean, you, you can. Uh, they have a pop right. Uh, and I guess the argument's like you don't have you don't you don't have to out the board if they don't make a board if you're playing like a hand trap deck. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They've got what a, an anchor, a afterburner, both is quick play, and then a draw three for some reason. And yeah. the gate. Actually, and the gate. The draw three is such a forced card that it kind of carries it. Like the, the fact it just Maybe. randomly draws three. Yeah. It's crazy on both turns, like. <laughs> I remember, like, when they reviewed the Mr. Rune cards, it was called Mr. Rune, not Runic, uh, yep. like, a couple months ago. And we all read that field spell, and we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> this card draws three cards. And yep, it's I still thought, true today. Yeah. I thought the deck was, like, tier zero for, like, a week. I was like, nah, surely yeah, 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 it has yeah, to yeah. be insane. <laughs> yeah, I also, I also thought so, and then I think everyone realized that the battle phase is kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's a good guess for Niagara. Let's see you next week. I, I think there's still people kind of... Maybe some hidden things. Or like some different ways to approach it. Because if you really think about it, we actually haven't seen a full event of in, in America with uh, the new set legal. We saw YCS Rio, which had some foreign players. And you saw Europe and we saw Oceanix. But like in theory, Americans that didn't travel to Rio had no real reason to like show anything. Yeah. So yeah, maybe there is yeah, some, some some hidden goo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's willing to spend a bunch of time innovating that deck when you know, we're Which expecting deck? a significant... Really? Well, just anything new. I mean, Danger Tier is established to be like a relatively good deck. I don't think that deck's ever going to properly be solved. 
for a while. But I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone's really that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think the injury tier is a weird one because like people approach it differently, and it's very hard to quantify what's like the best version of it because there are so many moving parts. It's hard to see. Oh, yeah. Brandon in high spirits was insane, or like desires is better. Uh, it's more dangerous. Good. It's less dangerous. Good. I think it's more it the cone. Yeah, event dependent. Yeah, it, yeah. Much. For sure. Because obviously Every you wouldn't want a high danger count versus yeah. if everyone's on dweller. Like, you really don't want a high danger count, but then the high danger yeah. count works really well into Sprite. So it's just like, yeah. It's just, yeah. I, think it's just... it's, I think it's always about being like one step ahead. Like, the same way, for example, I think the Rika deck was one step ahead of people who were doing for Euros. I think even like kind of our danger tier list and the Eradicator danger tier list were a step ahead of what people were doing for Rio. The way to win Niagara is people are adapting to last week. You want to be one week ahead. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just the people that have just sat down and just grinded versus combo tiers. Like, I'm sure if someone in their group just sat down, obviously, just grinded yeah. versus the matchup, and then you just found something that works really well. It's obviously the deck to beat um, going into Niagara. Yeah. For sure. Because, yeah, if you and, think about yeah. it, like, we didn't really have an event that Danger Tier was the deck to beat, because even for Oceanics, and I mean, Oceanics kind of Danger Tier was already more established. For Real, it was very recent. But yeah. Oceanics was super small. Yeah. Like, it's like 200 players. So Niagara is yeah, going to be a yeah. good sample size of how people adapt to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Droll, Nibiru, Shifter, like all solid cards, I think. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. Mystic Mind Burns taking another YTS. Uh, I think it has to be a hand trap approach as well. Like, I don't think you can reliably board break the deck yeah. with people playing a red case. There's just, there's just there's too many yeah. different points of interaction. It's tough. And like, now people are playing like Dynamiscus, like to even add another layer to it. Um, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just tough. This happens so often where we like yeah, where we, we get into like a new format with a super powerful deck and it starts off with ball breakers and like one month later it's like nope hand traps. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, actually like always like that. It's it's pretty funny how it's kinda of become a dynamic for Yugo formats. People yeah, I think it's rewarding though. If you can see it, I think it's very, very rewarding. Yeah. You wanna be yes you wanna be like in, in the top of the wave. You don't wanna be like being carried over. Yeah, <laughs> because ima imagine if someone like just picks up the danger tier list and just play a bunch of board breakers. How are you winning the mirror match? Like, what? How? What's your way to be the mirror match? Or not? There's nothing that lists a bit the mirror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. I think that's mainly it for us today. Um, we we got forty minutes, so we got through the the time. Good job, everyone. Yeah. We didn't even resort to banlist. Hopefully, guys. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the talk. That's true. We can save balance talk for next week. So yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you guys have anything else to say, guys? No, no, that should be it. All right. Oh, good. So a shout out to our sponsors, MetaMats, Card Market. I heard Henry got his credit today. <laughs> I got my credit. Finally, <laughs> I'm Marcus. Uh, to you, Marcus got paid. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but, but but Henry kept bitching about it in the group chat like every two seconds. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that is not twice. Alex, Alex, like got got rinse for you. Uh, so yeah, Metamat card market, uh, the Brotherhood of games, uh, not gamers apparel. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, just drop a like, subscribe. We like how the Tap Tuesdays have been doing massive numbers after Euros. All it took was Marcus just winning an event for us to be popular. Woo. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so so keep watching, send it to your friends, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Maybe on time, maybe not. That's the the beauty of it. Bye. Peace. All right,